broadcasting in some realm likely in a computer simulation <laughs> just saying oh wait a minute got a feedback here i'm like who's that voice hold on you guys i got feedback going oh man where's where is that coming from oh geez <laughs> that's so strange turn down your speakers well, no, it's not that, Mark. I, I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got something open here. I don't know about. That's oh, oh, you mean it's, it's. You've got your stream open somewhere. Hold on a second. Okay. Yeah, you got to mute. You got to actually mute the stream. I think yeah. that's it. I think I got it. Oh man, freaking! It's all right. It happens. All right, we got it. <laughs> hey, you guys. No, I'm serious. I, you know, at this point, I, I am a matrix earther. And I think I've talked to you about that, Mark. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, there, there's too many inconsistencies in this reality for it to be very physical. But regardless of what this all is, I'm really curious after seeing your show last night, I just yeah. felt like, man, I got to talk about this. And I just, you just happened to be available, you and your neon glasses. And so I thought I'd, <laughs> <laughs> like, let's talk about it, you guys. Let's talk about it. So, so I, I didn't even know. I didn't even know about the fact that we were going back to the moon until I saw your cast. Pretty much, nobody did. Nobody did. That's the brilliance of it. It, in fact, um, it it leads into, uh, and uh, kind of a new train of thought I've been working on recently, which is if the media, if an event happens but the media doesn't cover it, does the general population? do they are they made aware of it you know can they can they figure it out on their own they can't unless it comes across your your phone screens you don't it, it, it hasn't officially happened and so for let's let's get into the 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 details of what you were talking about there which yeah. is 50 years ago almost 50 years ago and uh was the last Apollo mission, which was Apollo 17 in 1972, right? Yes. 50 years later, and so don't think it's a coincidence. They they had to they had to get this sucker out there, be, be, otherwise you know it's 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 a milestone you don't want to pass without doing something. So 50 years later, they decided, oh hey, we're going to send people back to the moon, and kind of tie up all these questions that that have been asked have been asked for a long time, which is okay. Uh, why haven't the Americans been back in half a century? Why didn't any other country, you know, there's five countries with uh, with launch capabilities out there. Why didn't anybody go to the moon besides the Americans? And why didn't they, why was it never even, was never put on the table, even though every president since Reagan was committed to going back to the moon, right? Yes. And so they came up with something called the Artemis Project. Now, a lot of people have heard about Orion. Right, the Orion Project. There's two. Right. There's two projects running in NASA right now. There's the Orion Project, which is the Mars program, the, which is which. Even if it was real, even if even even if Mars was physically as far away as they said, it's a one way trip, right? Even if you survive the trip, which is so highly unlikely that you would you would make it and survive, yeah, you're not getting back. There is no even if you could again, even if this was real. So they're, they're, they, they've they been talking about this in a fantasy way. But all of a sudden, they came up with Artemis, which was basically Apollo 2.0. And it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to send people back to the moon. Now, if you remember back in 2017, uh, Elon Musk made that claim, which put him on my radar as one of the biggest frauds of all time, which was he said, oh, yeah, in 2018, I'm going to send two people around the moon and back. You know, just and then he said, "Oh, it's going to be ten people, and then twelve, and there's we're going to have painters. You know, it's going to be this great thing. It's like it never even and and the the time frame was so aggressive, it just absolutely blew me away. It was like, what are you talking about? You you don't have a rocket, you don't have a capsule, you don't have a crew, and you're going to pull this off in fifteen months? It's never ever going to happen. So Artemis came. So that and of course, ne nothing ever happened. Elon never sent anybody anywhere. So all of a sudden, Artemis came around." And it was supposed to launch unmanned, right, with a mannequin in the capsule. Yes. Uh, in August, and it was kicked down the road. The can was kicked down the road several times, obviously, uh, for weather and mechanical issues and fuel pump issues and blah blah blah. To where, just a week ago, 
literally, you know, a, a week ago, uh, Tuesday, uh, they decided they were going to do it. It's like, hey, you know what? Let's do it in November. And they scheduled it for 1, 1 a.m. Eastern time so that no one was going to be up for it, yeah, at least the Eastern Seaboard and probably Central. And I mean, come on, nobody knew. And we were all sitting there watching the, the you know, the launch, the launch feed. And, and it was supposed to launch shortly after we did the, our Strange World show. So we told people about it. And then, we, you know, the Karen and I and Peanut and, and other people just kind of hung around in, in a group chat watching the feed. And nothing, you know, we're, and, and all of a sudden they said, oh, well, we've got a fuel issue, you know, another fuel problem. It's like, ah, oh, this thing's never going to get off the ground. And they sent a special team in trucks, you know, racing down to the pad, you know, drama, drama. And supposedly they, they fixed because it just launched. So here's where it gets interesting. The, the so I, it's like, the, if you've heard what I've said for months and some years, is that if you were a producer, if somebody came to you with a billion dollars, you know, personal fee and said, hey, can you fake the moon mission for us today? Forget about 1969. Today, I would just laugh at him and say, what are you talking about? Right. <laughs> There's no way you could fake it now. The internet microscopes everything. There's no way you could get away with this. And so it's like, okay, there's no way you're going to be able to run. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to talk about that one too. Um, there's no way you're going to be able to run a, a moon program because it, you, you won't be able to fake it well enough. And so I said, okay, maybe it'll blow up on the pad or maybe it'll blow up challenger style while it's, while it's lifting off or whatever, or maybe the transmission will be cut and, and, you know, because of mechanical issues and it, and it just won't happen, but they did something even more clever. They, they took that last option, which was the transmission. And after the rocket basically got out of visual range, there was no transmission. There was no live feed at all. And that that was it. They just quietly just, again, launched the rocket in the middle of the night. And not only that, but the the, the media was really absent in re recording anything. CNN wasn't even, wasn't even barely in their top 10 stories. And Fox, I'm not kidding you, Fox, which is, you know, they're, they're wave the flag, go, go moon missions. I mean, Dana Perino famously said several years ago, when when we were criticizing you know the the whole apollo program she goes i believe in the moon landing because i'm a patriot and remember she was a pe press secretary for the bushes back in the day but basically she was saying you should believe whatever the government tells you <laughs> because that's just the way it is so but fox never ran the story never ran it there was no launch on fox news it didn't happen right so then we forward several days later four or five days later and uh um master gunner and uh, brian burton and i are, are talking on the phone and we're, we're going through and we're trying to find some feeds and we find see you see you can pull up that one we were, we're the real detailed moonscape you know the the giant where the moons in the entire foreground right I'll bring it pull, back. pull that one up again okay so we find this channel called the real packs which is a little bit of a takeoff on the um uh, the movie from some years ago with Kevin Spacey called Pax, where right. a, a guy pretended to be an alien. And I know there's people that there's there's some layers to that movie. But but the point was, is that this guy was he still is. This is a live feed coming from this guy's channel right now. And he's got three. If you look at his channel, he's got three live feeds running simultaneously. One where it's going over the moon, one under where, you know, the reverse angle of the moon. And another one, which is constantly looking at Earth. And it's like, wait a minute, you can't have all three running at the same time because you can't constantly be looking at Earth and orbiting the moon exactly every 30 minutes, right? Yes. And we're watching this thing and we're going, wait a minute, how? where's he getting the feed from? And not only that, so so um, Brian looks it up. He goes, he goes, dude, NASA won't even start a feed until something like 18 hours later. And this guy's been running... It since the launch, basically, and there are people, and I mean, I don't know how many people are, uh, you you got up on YouTube. But how many people are watching that thing right now? Four hundred. I, I mean, oh, I can't tell actually. Oh, it's all right. I mean, there's hundreds of people watching this at all times, but you could go in the chat room. I did, and so did Brian. And people, you could type in, you know, the people are defending it. They're they're saying it's out. You, you could look at it. It's like, wow, this is really amazing. It's like, dude, that's not a real feed. It's not the that's a feed at all. It's a completely rendered moon image by oh, a private. Okay. The what? 
This, I mean, I mean, it's and that's known. That's known that this is a rendered image. Oh yeah, well, it's absolutely rendered image because the NASA feed, which is one of the other links I sent you, the 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 probe again. If you believe NASA, NASA says, oh no no, the things we, we already orbited the moon once. It's going home. <laughs> it's been going home for right. the last so, so that, twenty so this, hours. This can't be live right now. Obviously, no, it's not live. There's there's nothing live about this. It's been you. It's been running the same image for days. It's it's running a, a a fake orbit around a CGI moon every thirty minutes. Yeah, what what piece of cheese is this? What variety? Exactly, I'm exactly. Just... And and it's just it's just absolutely stunning to me that he can get away with this. And you when you look, you know why when you look at it the, when you click on the about. So, so go to his channel and click on the about, and I'll show you exactly why he did this. Okay, All right. This will tell you his, his whole motivation. You ready? Right. You're, you're gonna like this. So. If you can get there, can you get there from here? Yeah, I think I can. So just go back to his his main channel. What the heck? What can I, I don't know how you did this. There, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So click on click on about. Scroll over. Scroll over. And click on about. And scroll down a little bit. This is why he's doing what he's doing. His entire about is his sub count since 2012 oh wow <laughs> that's all he cares about that's all he cares about and i guarantee he has bought subs because at some point he jumped from a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand in less than two years and then hundred thousand every you know every so many months afterwards after that so any but anyway here go back to uh click on the live button right yeah. So, so was there at any point was were they trying? Yeah, by the way, that's the reverse image. He's running three feeds constantly, and they're all completely generated. And that one right there, the that live view of the Earth from Moon. By the yeah. way, that that shot right there is that's that thumbnails from Apollo, which we'll get to. Click on that one real fast. Yeah. Click on this. All right. Let me see if it shows that blue same freaking blue dot in the background. Yeah. He's been running that shot for days. Absolutely freaking days, and, the, and oh, they're all fake. They're all CGI. So, is there anybody official like NASA saying that any of this is real? That these shots? No, are no, no, no. NASA. The thing is, I'm a little surprised that NASA's letting him get away with it because he says in the title, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is the feed from from Artemis. And he, the reason why he did it is because NASA wasn't running a feed until very recently. So let's click on one of the other links I sent you, which was oh yeah. So wait, so wait before you do that, yeah. So so this shot, let's let's reference this. This is what a private party can do. This is one guy. I don't know where he got the software to do it, but this is a rendered moon image. So this is you saying this is his own rendered moon? Yeah. Oh, so this yeah. never came from any place. No, else no, guy. no. I've never. We can't figure out where he got it from, other than he rendered it himself. Wow. I know. I know, and wow. and I bought I bought into it for about ten seconds. That I mean, that it was a, that it was an actual NASA feed. I was going, okay, well, this looks relatively similar to some of the NASA shit that they put out there. But anyway, he's running three feeds. The, the point is, is that he was getting away with it because NASA there was nothing else out there. And so again, you could go into those. That's the reverse image. Love that. And again, you could go in the chat room and there's people just, oh, wow, this is beautiful. This is fantastic. It's like, dude, there's no such that, you know, even if that is not an ass of feed. Absolutely. Yeah. And there, but there's some people out there that are at least going after it. Like he says, that cartoon, this cartoon is horrendous. Yeah, absolutely. Probably some of our people. And but, but Okay. So that right there, yeah. that is supposedly a live shot from NASA. Okay. Right now, right. It's it's supposedly coming back. All right. Where where do we want me to start here? <laughs> where do we go from here? Right. Okay. So first off, I'd like I'd like to point out the obvious, and this is for any of the um, uh, any of the globe tards that you want to send this to, which is if you want to tell me in 1969 that there are no stars in any shots because of exposure settings of the cameras, fine. In 1969. But this is 2022. Our cameras can do everything and anything. We we have amazing camera technology. Out of all the things that were denied to us as far as the future goes and the Jetsons future, we never had. We never got robot servants and flying cars and cities that are sit on tiny little pedestals like, like out of Star Wars, Cloud City. 
Our cameras can do anything. And yet, in none of these shots, nothing. I mean, hours and hours and days worth of footage from NASA, there are no stars. And you'd think, just for argument's sake, just for giggles, you would, while you're adjusting the contrast on doing whatever you can, you know, to, to adjust the shot, that you could get stars in the shot and they're not there ever, Mark, ever, ever, ever. Here, here's the thing. Like I, I, this is what just baffles me. Where were the P1000s, the P900s during this? Where, where is people capturing, by the way, Sarah, who did the meetup in uh, Del Mar recently, why yeah. were you out with your P1000 capturing? The oh, there was there was no transit. There was no transit in front of the moon. We, it was on the dark side, supposedly. Yeah, okay, okay. So, so that that was that was the script that there was right. nothing happening in front of the moon that we can see. Right. That's right. Amazing. And and the moon footage. Go go back to that shot where where the moon's in frame, where the moon and the Earth are in frame at the same time. You remember that shot we were before the show started? Right. Right. See if you can see if you can find that really fast. Skip skip to it. Because, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Why is the moon so low res, right? Well, I mean, it's almost no detail on the moon. The Earth, you absolutely positively cannot tell what part of the Earth you are looking at. And yet right. the capsule, you can count the rivets, right? You, you know, that, that image is perfect. It is exactly what you would hope for if you were trying to smudge up the images to where they are unremarkable. Right, you know, in NASA, the, the, that story I sent you, where NASA's like, "Oh, they're so they're so happy with the images," and and so you know, they were they were eye watering, they were so good. It's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> the guy that was faking it earlier, his moon stuff was better than yours, and that was just a simple software rendering program at the moon, right? Right. So, what? What? And the reason why this is going to be, and you wait, you wait. So go back to the live feed. So this looks actually fairly clear compared to the live feed if i wasn't mistaken the live feed was out was out of focus right it right. was smudgy One right which is what you would do because here's what i i have said for a while now the biggest problem if you were going to fake a moon mission even an unmanned probe version like this right and supposedly supposedly capsule is going to take three weeks to get back to earth which is oh, yeah, a whole yeah, other yeah. thing it only took six days to get there not even not even not even six days to get there. The, the entire Apollo 17 mission, which was the longest mission on record, again, if you believe it, took 12 days. And that includes the time they spent on the moon, right? Okay. So notice how smudgy this is. Here, and that was exactly what I would expect, which is the, the biggest problem with, with trying to fake something now is eventually you're going to have to go back to the Earth. And that Earth is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and more detailed and clearer and sharper because our cameras are very, very good. But not if you keep shooting with this resolution. What happened? It was wonderful. It's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Um, or, or in fact, go back to that that moonshot where the moon and the um, the Earth are in uh, in frame again, if you can. Let me point out something to you. What I think is interesting about this shot is, uh, forget about Crow Triple Seven. Anybody can do it. You could take a P one thousand and shoot the full moon, right? Yes. And it is from here, and it's gorgeous. You can get amazing detail with a P1000 or a P900 right right now from the ground from here, and yet with a probe that's right next to the moon. That's a really good point. Almost no detail that is at so, all. That is an incredible point. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is like, and we're we're shooting through atmosphere, right? right? And they're and they're not. There's nothing between hey, them hey, and the moon. Hey, Mark, what about the moon being translucent? Because it, so many times people are like capturing what looks like a, tra a tra you know, when it's in a different phase, when it's not right. full moon, when it's like in its in its uh, I guess weaning or whatever it is. Right. It's, it's translucent. You can see through the damn thing. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 look, let me get my official position on this. Do I think the moon is a even a three dimensional object? Doesn't have to be at all. Right. Uh, again, no different for me. It is no different from a planetarium. When you look at a ceiling on a planetarium, depending on if it's a good, let's say it's a it's a top notch planetarium. The moon looks great. Right. It looks you know you can see the craters on the moon. You can see shadows. It, it's rendered beautifully. Can you land on it? No, you can't. Is it even a two D image? Barely, barely a two D image. So uh, for people that say they can see through the moon, sometimes I'm not going to discount that. No. Not not by a long shot. Do I think that the and and so what? Short version here is what you're looking at here. This official NASA image is absolutely 
100%. Put it in a certificate you can frame. Fake as hell for so many reasons. Because it, they're doing what I would do. If I was trying to fake this thing, you know, think of what they've done so far, right? They launched in the dead of night. Nobody covered it. The, the, the press isn't running any live stories from it. They're making it a really long mission. I mean, again, this thing's three weeks. This thing's already heading back by the time you saw this shot right here. The, the moon, no detail at all. The earth, what the hell are you looking at? An eighth grader could make that earth. Uh, but, but the capsule, absolutely crystal clear. Absolutely crystal clear. No stars anywhere. Exactly what you would do to try to keep this thing. Again, the, the reason why there's no stars is for the same you have to keep it consistent they they 1969 they screwed it for everybody which is they couldn't show stars in 1969 because the, the the constellations have to be time and date stamped and you can't screw that up and now even though i'm pretty sure with even a half decent supercomputer you could get the right constellations out there yes. but you can't do it because the contrast would be so glaring you know that there'd be so many stars out there that one you barely even see the earth you know, from here and, and people would be comparing them to the Apollo shots. In fact, uh, did, did I sent you that Apollo clip? Didn't I? Yes. I can play that. Well, pull, pull that up real fast, which is remember, this is a 19, this is a 1970 production. Wait, no, that's not the one I don't think. Is uh, I don't know. Skip yeah. forward. Oh, oh, wait real quick while it's up. This is, did you see this? That apparently when the rocket launched, when Artemis launched, right. You off the doors. To the uh, oh yeah 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 and they wouldn't let the press any they 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 barricade the press was not allowed near the launch site yeah right now do I believe the rocket lifted off yeah we had one of our guys there you know he was ten miles away and he watched and look rocket technology is rocket technology but now, here's my question where hmm. did that rocket really go then oh dumped it somewhere in the ocean probably what 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 if it went beyond the maybe like what if, this is where my imagination goes in this what if these rockets are actually going somewhere else maybe beyond the realm of this earth? Beyond, uh, if you ever thought about that? Yeah, yeah. But if you're going to do that, you're going to do a, a special program for that. You're not going to make it public. You're not going to, you don't have to, you don't have to use a rocket like this if you're going to try to go beyond. You're you're going to launch rockets from Antarctica. So you're gonna there's, launch there's the left hand do, doing this over here. What's the right hand doing? Well, in this case, in this case, the, the left hand is trying to quietly do something and not have anyone even notice it. Because what I believe in what, what's happening now is I don't believe the Artemis program was ever supposed to move forward, was that was ever supposed to get this far. As by the way, this is one of the contrasts. This is a great shot, by the way, because they're going from, from light to dark, you know, and trying to trying to get the um the the I believe the earth into focus. And at no point do you see the stars. It's like right. even by accident, when you change camera settings that drastically, you should be seeing some stars, and they don't. And I, globalists, please tell me where where the hell are they? Tell me why in 2022, after days and days of footage, nobody ever took any pictures of stars. And, and one of your Mark, one of your greatest points that's always stuck with me in your flat Earth clues, which mm -hmm. got me back in 2015, and I called you promptly after. <laughs> I just like, oh my god, me and my friend called you, and we were just like, oh, dude. yeah, that's the Earth. That's the Earth, by the way. That's the Earth down there. Yeah, that's that's the Earth, okay. by the way. And and okay, what what part of the Earth are we looking at? Anyway, go ahead. What what part in the clues did you? Oh no, just just that. I and I brought it up to uh, Bob today. By the way, I'm gonna, when I was on the phone with him, Kivyet. I'm like, when are they gonna give us a 180 degree pan, like you say in the clues? Yeah, of the Earth. Yeah, the breaking the fourth wall, and uh, and you can't, you, you can't do it. Um, the, you know, there were three three or four cameras supposedly on this thing. Uh, plus, oh my God, uh, the thrusters you can see right here. These, those are the thrusters supposedly slow it down. And my argument has been there for a while now, which is, please tell me in the, in the world of physics, you know, if when you're walking, your feet are pushing off the ground. When you're in the water, either you, your hands are pushing you through the water or a boat propeller. When a plane is in the air, it's the propeller that's it's pushing against the atmosphere. It's not pushing against nothing. It's you're, it's basically a it's a fog. It's a light version of water. The problem is is when you're talking about space, you're talking about nothing. So when the thrusters are kicking off, what are they pushing against? Every action there has to be an equal and opposite reaction. What are the thrusters pushing? If if they're pushing against a vacuum, you're pushing against nothing. So how are you going? 
from whatever it is, five or 6,000 miles an hour. Apparently, this thing was going pretty slow to the moon. 5,000 miles an hour down to 300 miles an hour. How are you slowing down? How are you doing that when you're going to the moon? And it's like, nope, nobody, nobody wants to talk about it. It's like, oh, it's just how it works. It's like, hey Mark, are they stopping somewhere to grab some food on the way back? I mean, what's this about? Oh, but yeah, yeah, let, let's get into that real fast, which is, so this move, this is a dry run, right? <laughs> okay, so Apollo, it's been 50 years since the last mission of Apollo, right? And the, the longest mission they ever took was 12 days, and that was Apollo 17, right? Which was five days, what, four or five days there, a couple days in the ground, barely, and then the couple, you know, four or five days back. This probe is taking 30 days to get back. You know, 30, 30 days total to, to it's going to be like three weeks. I say three, something like that, it's like three weeks to get back. And it's like, what are you talking about for a dry run? That's a terrible, wh how, what are you going to do when you have people? Cause the next one, by the way, Artemis two, right? That was, so we're Artemis is one. This is what we're talking about. Artemis two. Yeah. Ryan's stunning images, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I got your stunning image right here. Um, yeah. Launching the, yeah, the, 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 the rockets from the pad always they're always focusing on that oh those are your stunning images but when you get up there then you got that crap it's like whatever so I mean, when you're, if you're, if you're, if you're doing a dry so artemis i can see this 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 i'm sorry to interrupt but this is like his pause story. that pause that pause that but go back go back go back go yeah, back yeah. go back to that globe i want to show you something so this shot right here, which is straight out of any, any Hollywood shop could do this in two seconds, right? So this is a shot of them leaving the earth. Remember how I said there has never been a shot unedited. It's not, still, still never happened, right? This has been a prime opportunity for it where you turn on the camera, one of the cameras, you point it down and you leave it running because it doesn't take that long, right? This is, you know, that's the quickest part of the mission is, is the liftoff. Yeah. So. As it's leaving the Earth, the Earth should form into a ball, and that's it. But that's not what we saw with NASA. It was like, you know, nothing, 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 and go to Earth. And this is it. It's like, okay, what about uh, the, the the big firing in the rockets before this? we got to this point? And, of course, the other question is, where are the stars when you're, when you're doing this? I mean, why, yeah. why didn't it happen? This is one of the most significant, important missions it, since the 70s. And this is what they're giving us. Yeah. Well, and yet yeah, let, let's let's go let's go down that road. Which is you're absolutely right. This is the most significant space mission in 50 years. And Fox News, the big red, white, and blue wave the flag. They're not covering it at all. You would have thought they would have. We would have woke up Wednesday morning and that, and they would have said, "Oh yeah, by the way, while you were asleep, NASA's heading off to the moon." Well, so uh, anyway, so we're, we're, let me let me break down the Artemis one. The, what Artemis one is? It's an unmanned capsule with a mannequin, very similar to the Tesla Roadster in space mannequin, by the way, that goes around the moon, doesn't do anything, takes some pictures, and comes home. That is, yeah. There's that's the highlight reel. That's the highlight reel, by the way. Oh yeah, look at that. Ah, it's gorgeous, absolutely freaking gorgeous. Uh huh. So whatever. Yeah, that's the best they got. Wow. Yeah. So and, and and the dark side of the moon. I mean, why not just go flat? Well, why not go in front of it? I mean, why, if, look, if you're really doing this, then what are you what are you doing? Why why aren't you showing us from the front side? Let everybody right. break, you know break out their P900s and P1000s and yeah, because they they didn't there. want they don't want people looking at this one. They wanted for whatever reason. I okay, I'm a. I'm a firm believer that the Artemis program was never supposed to happen. Oh, there, there's CGI, by the way. <laughs> Did that really happen? The, um, yeah, December 11th is when it's going to be landing, supposedly, in the Pacific Ocean, which is interesting. Like San Diego, I heard. At, off of San Diego? Yes. Oh, funny. So, anyway, where, where was I going with this? Oh, so I believe that the, there, there was supposed to be a big event. I believe that, uh, you know, you hand out... And I'll be delicate with how I say this. You hand out 12 billion doses of a shot, right? And then you follow that with a major world event, like an international conflict, like an escalation from, like, say, Ukraine that was supposed to escalate into a European theater of war or a Taiwan escalation. 
which was supposed to escalate in a Pacific theater. And neither happened. So now you're stuck and Artemis has to move forward. So you as quiet, that's the word here, as quietly as possible, you make this mission go forward. You launch in the dead of night. You make sure the media does not give any fanfare. You make the images so generic and so forgettable. Is anyone going to use this for their wallpaper? For their um, uh, for their desktop? No. It doesn't look like it. Of course not. It's What are you looking at? It's a blob of gray, a little blue dot, and the back part of a, a space capsule, right? Yes. And then that's it. And then once it lands in December 11th, you don't have to talk to, about it anymore until 2024 when Artemis 2 launches. Artemis 2, also not going to land, is supposedly going to be carrying four people just like this, only with people, right? Going around the moon right? and, and then just splashing down probably in San Diego again. The bigger question there is, we've already done this. A bunch of times, if you believe them, right? NASA did it, what, six times? Right. In the span of like three years, just bam, 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 bam. And yet we can't, we're not even going to send a manned craft around with our technology that we have now. We're not even going to send a manned craft around the moon. Because why? Because we're, we're, we're baby steps? Because we're we're relearning this? What are, you, what are you talking about? We know everything about going to the moon. The Americans know absolutely everything, if you believe them. So, right. and then in 2025 or 26, then they're supposedly going to land again. And th as tough as this was to fake, because, you know, all they're going to do is smudge the, the, the pictures on the way back, you know, as the moon or as the earth gets bigger and bigger, the, the, the next mission in 24, if, if that one doesn't get kicked down the road a bunch of times, um, is tougher because you've got a crew. And there's okay, no, we'll go there. Capcom on the hot oh yeah. Okay. Down. So yeah, kid, you don't have to do, you do the audio on this. But Apollo, if you forward, the, yeah, go back. So that, so some of those shots of the, um, uh, you you might see later ones. That's supposedly the moon from Apollo, but that's different. Remember, there was no CGI back in 1969, so they right. had to use physical models. That's why it looks as clear as it does, right? It, and all you have to do is make sure the perspective stays constant, and you got it. That's that's all you need to do. And right. uh, and so what, what we were saying last night is the Apollo 69 version of this, of what they did, is better than the, the modern stuff now because they use physical models and, you know, for whatever reason, they didn't want to do that this time. It's It was easier to do a CGI and they thought, okay, we'll just... We'll, we'll just smudge it up as, as and keep it... And it I, I, I don't know how long that video is. Are there any other shots when they get closer? Let's see what we got here. Because there's some that, I mean, when you really get down there. And in 69, of course, everyone was just amazed by the technology. Oh, yeah, the capsule. You know, and, and people forget 99% of the people that uh, even Americans don't even know that it wasn't just a capsule that landed on the moon, supposedly, and then lifted off and headed back to Earth. There was a geo. Yeah, that shot right there. So <laughs> that is a physical model that they used in place of the moon. And it again, it looks better than uh, than the stuff today. than the stuff we have today. But because they didn't have any stars in the background, we couldn't yeah, show any stars now. Otherwise, you you could yep, you, you could get consistency. Yeah, you got to stay consistent. It screws everybody up. So hey, you guys, we got Mark Sargent in the house. Anybody want to call in? Um, questions nine five one five two five fifty fifty. Man, this is a good opportunity to, to talk to Mark. Hey, Mark, I've had a question for you for some time. Yeah, who's Caroline? <laughs> <laughs> Caroline is uh, um, a flat Earth AZ chick, and uh, she was a she still is uh, a woman who she's one of ours who came to meet me at a meetup that I would they flew me in for in Colorado Springs some some years ago, and we dated for a while, and then uh, we didn't date for a while but we, we remain good friends and she lives in idaho now and she's a, a big big fe cheer, cheerleader went to the conferences and uh was just a ball of sunshine all the time she was is she hot yes yeah in <laughs> fact yeah she no she was she's very cute yeah and she always reminded me of uh because she's about that age she kind of reminded me of tina Fey's older sister 
And I don't know if Tina Fey even has old older sister, but every time I saw her, it's like, my God, you and Tina Fey could be related. And uh, she just, I don't know, she had that look to her. She's great. She, she was ex Air Force and uh, worked in healthcare and just great. Absolutely wonderful girl. And, so, are, are, and are true smacks really good? True smacks are awesome. I like true smacks. I, I get them um, sent to me pretty much on a regular basis. <laughs> I get, not, I get a bad, not a bad gig, Mark. I get paid in truth and in, in trail mix. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, no, it's cool. I, I, and I want to talk a bit uh, while you guys are calling in. I see the phone lines are just overloaded right now. Um, <laughs> by the way, notice that interest, by the way, that there were crowds of people outside of buildings saying. and how they were so excited about this. People, I mean, they were watching all over the world. I know that's what I'm saying, Mark. It's like, and and this is just like under the rug. On yeah, huge the amount of, of the moon. Yeah, it's like what was it? It wasn't blase. It was just that they didn't want to talk about it because they don't want all those faces right there. They don't want them looking at this thing because yeah. the more people look at it, the more they're going to realize. In fact, that the Pax guy is not helping them because the Pax guy sh for his channel, he's showing them how easy it is to fake. Wow. Because he's got people right now, they're going, oh, this is the most greatest thing ever. It's like, dude, it is not a real stream. <laughs> you can go to NASA's site, and <clears throat> that should confuse people. Right. Because other people would be like, well, wait, why isn't NASA's stream kind of like this? It's like, well, because they don't want to show you that. See, I have this theory about CGI. It's, uh, that stands for a computer uh, graphics interface, correct? Uh, image. Image. Oh, image. <coughs> right. image. Im image or imagery. Right. And so I've had this thought that like they created CGI in part, or at least it's like, okay, well, this is convenient. Let's use this to cover the real stuff. I mean, because there's a lot of strange being that your show is called Strange World. Right. And if you just go across TikTok, if just 5% of that stuff, that paranormal stuff is real, holy crap, we live in a stranger world than I could ever imagine. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it is absolutely just, again, I love the fact that they are doing the reason why I, I know that the, the, what NASA is doing is fake is because they're doing what I would do. If someone came to me and forced me gun to my head and said, look, dude, you're the best producer in Hollywood. We got to get, we got to get this moon thing happening. That's and, and so you go to your production team and you say, okay. In fact, the, the line I used, if you listen to the show last night, if you remember, if you're old enough to remember the, uh, the Kevin Costner movie from the early eighties called no way out, which was uh, he was a, a Russian spy that was going to get found out from the Naval Intelligence Office. Of course, the, 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 the spoiler alert, he's a Russian spy and because you don't find out to the very end of the movie. But there was a Polaroid taken of him and they were using computers to try to render the Polaroid image, you know, the, 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 the part you peel off uh, into a picture. And he was say, the, the, the he was kind of had his friend try to smudge up the image trying to distort it as much as possible to delay the investigation. And that's what they're doing here with the uh, with the NASA footage. The the Earth, at no point in any of those Earth shots, can you tell what part of the Earth you're looking at? In fact, it, what surprised me is how much they were smudging up the moon shots. So you couldn't tell, because you know every crater on the moon is named and mapped out. But you couldn't even tell what you were looking part of, at, at the moon. And yet the Apollo stuff from 1969, those still shots right there, from a physical image, those are crystal clear. I mean, those. Why? Why is that image there better than a 2022 probe that's as close to the moon with better cameras? Yeah, I mean, how how is this better? This is so historic, I and know. They, and, and they're just giving us nothing. I know. Nothing. I know they're giving us nothing, and again, I believe it's because it was never supposed to happen. So what think, is so what is the distraction? The left hand in the right hand. What's the right hand doing then? Nothing, nothing right now because because it was never supposed to happen. The right hand was supposed to be a major military conflict. That's what it was supposed to be. Everyone saw it coming. They did everything right, and I, again, I'm. I'm I, I will try to be delicate when I say this because I'm, I'm not trying to be the villain in the room, but but Russia was supposed to be the villain, right? It was. It's kind of like it's kind of like a stage play, and you know the antagonist, right? And it's like, oh, this is the bad guy. The bad guy's going to go up on stage now, and he's not going up on stage, right? And he's got there's no understudy, and and you're like, dude, why aren't you going? It's like ah, I really don't feel like going on stage tonight, and you're like, what the hell do we do, right? So. The Artemis, it's like crap. Eventually, they they figured out. Okay, 
they, it took them a while to figure this out. So they kicked the can down the road. You remember, is this supposed to launch in the summer? Yeah. Kicked that can down the road. Kicked down. Then they said, "Let's just launch in the middle of the night. We'll be real quiet about it. We won't. We basically will not give the media anything. You know, because they've got a big marketing team at NASA. They can they can run space stories all they want. They just told their marketing team, don't give anything to the press unless they ask. And if they ask, give them just the bare minimum. Just make it seem like it's no big deal. And that's what we're looking at. Artemis yeah. One is a, almost a um." I don't even know what have the words for it. It's just quiet. It's it's like okay, this is your dry run for Apollo 2.0, and nobody's nobody's watching it. I mean, compared to other things, and your footage is terrible, and you're going to land in the Pacific Ocean with no fanfare, and then you're just going to, I would think, kick the can down the road for remember sense. two more years. It just makes me think that this reality is trolling us. <laughs> I mean, I just I can't keep coming back to that. I feel like I'm being trolled. This whole thing is just crazy. Hey, um, I, I, uh, Mark, I invited uh, my my um my other Mount Delta brother into the room with us. Who who uh, you might you might know about Scarab Dan. Hey, welcome, Dan. Glad you joined us. Hey, man. Thank you. Um, dude, I am here with the one and only Mark Sargent. Wow. Um, this is great, man. You know, I called Mark I did years too. ago. I did you? Yeah. Yes, dude. We talked. Oh, awesome. We, we had a great discussion. And I told you how to, how to, um, uh, you know, completely figure out this flat earth thing. And, and remember, I think you asked people like, you know, you guys have any ideas how to prove it? Right, and I called with a, with an idea, and I guess it never really saw the light of day. Maybe there was a better idea that you thought, but what it was was I said send one of those high altitude balloons up at like I don't know midnight. Yeah, and if we can see the sun, we can pull it back in, and we can see it down like the flatness of the Earth or the disc or whatever. Yeah, we should be able to see some sort of you know projected light further down at night because I could never understand why. We always either did these things in the middle of the night or during the day where they would send them up high, you know, these super high altitude. Balloons. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But I was hoping, yeah, like like there was a way to pull back in. Like, it, so if the sun has gone around the earth, like they say, yeah, then then essentially we should be, be able to go high enough so that we'd see it further down is what I was thinking. So uh, it's idea. it's not a terrible idea. I the experiments, well, as you know, um, I mean, we were we were uh, doing we could do no wrong in 20, 2019, but the beginning of 2020, you know, when all the steel doors started going down and mm -hmm. we were we were stunted like anyone, which was yep. so even experiments. I mean, we people were not only were they not traveling internationally, there were a lot of people that just weren't weren't traveling across, even driving across state borders because they didn't know what the hell was going on. I got so, questions about Artemis, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, for, is it a manned mission? This one isn't, but it will okay. be. Artemis okay. Artemis 2 and 3 are going to be manned, and I, I can't overstate hmm. this. Art the, the, the eventual Artemis follow-up missions are the first time since the Americans went to the moon. You know, their, their, their plan is to put people back on the moon after all this time. But I don't think they were ever serious about it. I don't think they were ever going to, uh, that it was ever supposed to happen because the, the Great Reset or whatever you want to call it was supposed to be in full effect. And it never happened. It never materialized. So now they just quietly, I think what they'll probably do after this mission comes back in three weeks, I think Artemis 2 and 3, which are going to be manned, are going to be kicked down the road because it's one thing to send to send a probe again even if it's all fake it's another thing to put people in there because then you've got a whole nother layer of again this is four people supposedly and uh, including one I, I think i said last night one of them's one of them, one of the seats has been reserved for the canadian space agency and i'm going because canada's known for aerospace Hmm. whatever that's fine like so yeah it's both short, short version it's supposed to be manned yeah 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 it's weird how like we always have this strife with all these other countries like in like we're about to go to war with russia but they always have a you know cosmonaut in there or right. you know it's like it's weird it's 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 strange how you know with with the space missions it's never been a problem you yeah know, it, the, the political stuff so it's also ridiculous again why the uh why no other nation like the only Americans went to the moon and nobody, not only did no other nation ever go, no one even tried. 
that's the part that just blows my mind. It's like 50 years later, since you know, I know a five nations supposedly with 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 launch capability, including um, China, Europe, uh, Russia. Oh crap! Who are the other two? Japan. Oh, and the United States. So five total, and yeah, nobody even tried, especially the Russians. I mean, you know, the, well, Soviet the, the Union. Chinese uh, sent a probe, right? Supposedly. Oh China. yeah, let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about the fact that they supposedly, again, that there's the power of media for you, which is mm -hmm. they supposedly have had a, a rover, like a Mars rover, on the dark side of the moon mm -hmm. for four years now. I think it, I may even be off, it might even be five, but I think it's at least four, four years, and the American media will not talk about it because it brings up the whole topic of, well, wait a minute, if they've got a probe there, why don't we have stuff there? In fact, why did the, the Chinese land it on the dark side of the moon? Where no one can see it. Well, why didn't they how land does it in the power? It's the what? How does it power itself? Yeah, exactly. If you're not power. well, it still gets solar stuff because you know the dark side does get oh. sunlight. But why aren't you landing on this side? In fact, the only mm. thing interesting, the only place interesting you can land is in the sea of tranquility, where all the American junk is. Again, if you believe it's real, but you can't do that. Because even though I said it'd be a great opportunity for China, because you'd land there and you could accidentally tip over the American flag and turn it into a big international incident. Right. But no, because because everything has to be in the right place. And I don't think they know where everything's supposed to be. Because, you know, all again, all it takes is one nerd in, in the middle of the night staring at the images like, hey, that shouldn't be there. And that's it. Then he, I'm going to take a screenshot of that and post it on a forum. And you're you're cooked. You're done. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, but you're absolutely right. China has supposedly had a rover there for for four years. Um, hey, and why is? Oh, oh go sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I was in one more question. I just want to ask him, like, in these shots, you know, that we show that you're kind of pointing out, like they look fake. But I was gonna say, isn't it strange why, like, and shouldn't the Earth be so much bigger in the shot? Like, it's always so much small. It's like totally small. Yeah. I just, I just don't understand. Like, you know, like. In yeah, well, think, even, think about this. Think about this. Yeah. So you're when you're looking on a, on a beautiful full moon night. Now, granted, atmospheric lensing does come into effect. You know, here here with the atmosphere, but the moon yeah. come. You know, is it shows up on the horizon, right? And it's huge, right? It's it's it, you. Everyone's seen one, depending on where you were in the country. They're gorgeous, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's supposedly an object that's only two thousand miles wide. If you have an eight thousand mile wide object right. coming up, uh, you know, on the horizon or whatever you want to say, I, I, again, we're not going to get into the argument of, of, you know, how it's how it's showing up on the horizon, but it should be gigantic. It should be massive. It should be massive, and yet the yeah. astronauts hardly ever brought it up. The Apollo astronauts. In fact, let me throw one more out thing. I love bringing this one up. I didn't bring it up a lot on last night's show, which is the the. If you ever talk to scuba divers, if you know friends that are scuba divers, there is one thing and only one thing they really care about when they're down there, and that is how much air they have left. They've got a big clock, a big giant clock thing that, that hangs off of them that they're constantly looking at, constantly saying, oh, you know, we've got this much air left, we've got this much air left. You know what you never, ever heard of when you were the astronauts talking on the moon? How much air they had left. It was like right. it was unlimited. They were like running around. It's like no one ever said, "Hey, we only got 13 minutes of air left. We should probably head back to the capsule." That'd be the only thing. The only thing I would care about. I don't care if you're an air airline pilots are trained, by the way, you know, to sound, you know, cool under pressure. The airline pilots. When you're on the moon, again, if it was real, the only thing you'd care about is not dying. That's all you'd care about. It'd be like you look at the Earth and it's like that's a long way back. And you'd be like you you would be super careful about anything. You would be paranoid every time you fell in case there was a sharp rock. You know, you'd be checking and rechecking your fuel systems and you would you wouldn't be playing golf. Yeah. You wouldn't be running around in your little space car. Do oh, you'd be proud of me, Mark, because I mean I, I got my 83-year-old father to understand that the moon landing were probably fake. Good. And you know, for the longest time he believed it. And he thought I was nuts when I first brought it up. And I was like, Dad, here's the deal. Well, everybody I said, Let's watch the footage. Let's watch the footage of Neil Armstrong and all the guys, you know, doing that first interview when they got back and look at oh, the international press conference. Yeah. 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 I said, Dad, I mean, come on. Look at these guys. I mean, I mean, what is your heart telling you? I was like, they obviously and, didn't do it. And I and, said, Neil Armstrong never did any interviews. Like he did two or three, whatever in his lifetime before he passed. 
Right. And so, yeah, that that to me is just is a smoking gun. And of course, they all have to stay liquored up to do anything, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. The the credit, I, I will say this: the 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 original movie. Oh, that's a one. I know that the CGI Earth. You can was that just Google Earth? Well, yeah. yeah the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I've got my fellow Matrix type brother here who looks at the Mandela effect very closely. You guys, yeah. And you know, one of the main things that has clued me off is the geography shifts in the Earth. Okay, so if we're talking about the Earth, we right. know as Mandela effect reality shift, which is what I prefer to call it. And I know Karen B, I know you call it reality shifts, not Mandela effect, because Mandela effect does not give it its credence that it deserves. But we've seen these reality shifts. And Mark, I mean, where's the North Pole? I mean, you can't see it in this shot. They've covered it up with clouds and stuff. But we right. used to have a North Pole where, you know, freaking Santa was. <laughs> the, you know, South America has moved about uh, 1,500 miles, I guess, east. And then we've got over here, these are the big ones for people to see the reality shifts. We see that, uh, you know, uh, Australia's moved north. <laughs> I yeah. mean, so when we look at when we look at reality from this standpoint, that we know we existed in the, on the Sagittarius arm, we we're, we were not in Orion. We were on the outskirts of the Sagittarius arm. We must be some. Let's so let's get into the whole like game theory of reality that we're that this sure. reality is uh, some type of perhaps game simulation. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I've, I've, I, I mean, if you've heard any of the stuff I've done, I would love to talk about game simulation more, but most of the time I can't because the general population still never really absorb the whole virtual reality concept, even though lots and lots of people play video games, which are, are ever evolving, and the the movies, the virtual reality movies have kind of tapped out. You remember back in the day, I mean, you remember the Matrix is now... 23 years old that's a long time ago right you know for for in movie terms yes. and the the 13th floor which is even i think a better movie and if you're looking at virtual reality Big movies movie, yes um that's also you know 20 23 years old give or take and that was based on a german movie called world on a wire from the mid 70s which i thought was extremely ambitious for 1975 it's like wow you're gonna do a virtual reality movie in 1975 and um, and that was based on a, a book called Simulacron uh, Three, but I, the the problem is is again people understand the Matrix. Some they 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 understand that the general concept, but they don't for whatever reason they can't make the leap to where we are now. So what I, what I'm saying is because I come from the video game world. I mean, I you know I, I I helped produce video games back in the day. Yes. And the ultimate goal there is to create games that are completely immersive. The, the bigger problem there is you, you have to, kind of like the Matrix. Remember how you tapped into the Matrix, right? You had to jam a big spike in the back of your head. Yeah, that, that good, hurt. Yeah, I remember. Good, <laughs> yeah, good, yeah, good luck get, yeah, good luck getting that into the entertainment world. Right. right? The media world. The, jamming a big spike in your head. There's no health insurance company in the world that would, that would ever allow that to happen. Sort of like why the purge would never be allowed to happen in real life. Good movie concept, never ever going to happen. Um, but what I was getting is when we developed video games, you know, doesn't matter what you're playing now. I mean, if it's GTA or Minecraft or World of Warcraft or whatever, you're playing on a completely flat world. And and by that I mean the the it's a box. You're you're playing in a giant cake box. The the even if it's a domed sky, I mean, yeah, you see spheres and planets up in the sky. It's a giant. Everything is squared off at the edges. In fact, it's not even a snow globe. It's a snow globe inside of a box, because computers can't truly draw circles or spheres. It's all pixels. That's why pixels are squares, right? You know, you you don't know. We don't know how to tell a computer how to draw a circle. The closest we can do is like draw draw a bunch of really 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 tiny stairs so that the human eye can't pick it up, right? Everything everything's ninety degree angles. So what we learned, though, when we were making virtual reality games, and this is straight out of the 13th floor, which I highly, highly recommend people get into, which is when we were building them, we started realizing that the stuff that we were, the tools that we were using in the video games, they're like that shot right there with the, the red and green with the car, that's, that's straight out of the 13th floor right there. Right. That's that's like one of the end shots of the 13th floor. It's gorgeous. So the what we were realizing when we were building video games is that the tools we were using 
we were seeing here. And by that, I will we'll get into, uh, I'll, I'll give you two concepts, but the first one, which is most obvious, and I highly recommend people look into it. There's a, a wonderful video I put together on my channel five years ago now uh, called uh, Virtual Reality and How It Relates to Flat Earth. And what I mean by that is something called the double slit experiment. And I won't bore you with the, the whole breakdown of the physics, but what it means is, is if you're not looking at something, what you know, whatever you're looking at in front of you, it is crisp and detailed and looks great, right? Whatever's behind you isn't, right? Because you're not looking at it, right. and that's what the double slit experiment proved. When they were trying to, when they were doing single electron experiments, they were saying, "Oh, look, a particle, super detailed, right? Super detailed particles, right?" when they were when they were looking at it when they took the camera away it wasn't a particle anymore it was just this blurry potential wave it's like what and they didn't understand it they was like what the hell but it was completely repeatable every single time it's like well, it doesn't even make sense it it goes into the um tree in the the forest argument which is you, you heard this when we we're growing up i mean i heard this when i was a kid and i you don't understand it's like if a tree falls in a forest and there's no one there to there to hear it doesn't make a sound right right and it, you have to wrestle with that because you're like uh it, but now we know it, from the video game world i can absolutely tell you the tree absolutely does not make a sound the tree has not been built yet yeah it has been rendered yeah it has been rendered because you're not there hey, there Mark. is no there is no tree it's not that it, it it's not that it fell it's it's not there. So what we were doing and so what we were this was happening in this happens in our world. And it also happens in the video game worlds which we imitate, which yeah. we create our virtual worlds when we create video games whatever's look whatever you're looking in front of it's called flashlight graphics. Whatever you're looking at in front of you is being rendered perfectly because you're looking at them. But whatever's behind you isn't because that saves resources. It, why? Why? It's efficient. That's the way you do it. Why would you render anything behind you? You're not looking at it. It's, it's pointless. It's, I, or the bigger version is you're looking off in the distance. So we'll use GTA, no, Grand Theft Auto for a great, great, great example. Or Warcraft, doesn't matter. There's a mountain off in the distance. And you know full well that your character will never be able to make it to the other side of that mountain. It's just how the game works. You're stuck in this town. You're, you're landlocked right? Do you draw the trees on the other side of the mountain? No, no. why? Why would you? No, why, why the hell would you do it? You don't need to waste the resources. Why, yeah, why would you raise, waste processor power or RAM or whatever it is? You, you would not waste this. Well, that's the video game world, right? Why is it happening here? Why does it happen in where in the world where, where we're sitting in right now? And it absolutely is happening. And because of that, then you kind of have to ask yourself, and this has been this is not a new concept necessarily. It's been talked about in Star Trek Next Gen and and again, the the um uh the movie thing you have up on screen there, which is the uh the 13th floor. Now, now a little spoiler for you the, uh, for people who are gonna watch it, because if you haven't watched it by now, it's that you're not, I'm not gonna break your heads or anything, which was when they made their and this was a 19 late 90s movie, right? They made a virtual world and they were in there. And somebody in that virtual world <laughs> who, who seemed more godlike than anything told them, by the way, the test that you use to define your reality in this virtual world, you might want to use that test when you get out of it. And that's what that's how we how they found out. It's like, holy crap, we we made a simulation and we're in a simulation, right? Yes. And it just goes from there. But I will take it even one step further. So you think that's bad enough. And that shouldn't that shouldn't really keep people up at night. I mean, the fact that we're we potentially could be in a virtual reality, very, very possible. But we've been it's it's been something that's been toyed with. I mean, again, back from the 1960s, look up the book called, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's called Simul type in uh, Simulacron three. Okay. Simulacron three, and see what what year that was. I think it was sixty four. Simulacron S I M I L. Hey Mark, isn't yeah. it weird when you think about like uh, Admiral Byrd when three. he gave that interview where yeah. he said, you know, we went beyond Antarctica and it was That's another it. continent. Yeah. 
you know, bigger than North America? Like, number one, how did you know it was bigger than North America? So you must have explained. Right. Well, he was. I mean, at, so Admiral, did, you, did that, is, is that part of the experience? Like, you went beyond what we, you know, currently know. As I planet. don't think he, I don't think he went beyond it, but he knew it was there. Right. Meaning so, he, is there more the, land? Is there more land? Are, that know, is I've, the big question. Is there more land in this movie? You know, I've often said, is is it like M Night Shyamalan's movie, The Village, where we're kind of in the middle, and the real high tech stuffs on the outside, and they kind of keep us kind of two hundred years behind. You know? Yeah. 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 I I believe we were slowed down. I th I believe older civilizations were were better than were were more advanced than us and quicker. But that doesn't necessarily if you're if you're lack of a better term god or a higher power and you're trying to trying to see trying to draw this thing out our our civilization out you don't want to make us turn into the jetsons because again once you have flying cars that's it we you know you figure this out really fast the the brilliance of the world that we live in right now in our civilization is 99.9% .9 of the population don't know where you where they are you know, because they, they just don't have the tools to get there. You right. know what I mean? They don't have, nobody has, nobody has flying cars. The best tech we have, the future that was denied to us, what do we have? We have smartphones and we have radio controlled vacuum cleaners. We have, <laughs> we have flying cars. We, we have invented them, but, uh, well, you know, but it's not, ago, they're not, they're not allowing them. Well, I mean, it's not, but it's not, it's not truly flying. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not the well, unified field engine cars. No, 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 no. These are like big drones that are. Coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know, no, for, like, no. Yeah, forget yeah, about yeah. those things. No, yeah, I mean, hey, I'm just saying. I mean, it's a yeah, start, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. By the way, you're never going to be allowed. You are never going to allow no. the general public to to fly <laughs> car sized <laughs> no. drones. No, that's that not would be happen. a nightmare. For yeah. so many reasons, for uh, the it would cops be, especially. For the oh cops. my god, it would be awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. What do you do with cops? How do you enforce yeah. that? Do you have net? No. Then you have mm -hmm. giant flying drone cops, and mm -hmm. how does that work? How do you pull somebody over? And right. what if they're flying drunk? Oh my god, there's so many awful mm -hmm. things. Anyway, let's get back to the the Matrix thing. So, real fast. Um, oh yeah, sorry. R real fast on your Admiral Bird thing. Do I think we're penned in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Uh, I, I, but even he didn't know how a uh, hard line it was uh mm -hmm. but he yeah they they had to silence uh admiral bird i believe because he just couldn't it, he was too casual he he enjoyed the the press too much not not that he had an ego or anything i mean he was you know he was fine but he was he was very casual about telling them things like in that 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 interview that that i put up on the on the clues where you know he was talking about uranium down in antarctica <laughs> and, and immediately goes yeah i probably shouldn't have said that it's like oh dude <laughs> you know you've got you've got i'm sure he's got military people that are watching this later it's like man what were you thinking but mm -hmm. anyway so the the other thing besides the double slit experiment if you want to look up something that's really really interesting uh there's a shot yeah there's several shots of the 13th floor there good good stuff good a really underrated movie i mean the matrix got all the press because you know the bullet time and it was so cool and slick and it had a rock music soundtrack but 13th floor was way more of a think piece it was it was very cool and it had a happy ending it was really i thought it was great um but the other part of the the virtual world which is you should look up if you get a chance is called um i think neuroscience and free will and this was an experiment that was done some years ago. You know, scientists scientists do stuff just because they can. So they were hooking up electrodes to people's brains, you know, just on the outside, you know, putting the stickers on people's heads. And they were they were having them, you know, just do simple stuff on the computer, which was like pick a number between um, uh, like one and ten on the keyboard. And not only were they tracking that, they're tracking the brain waves when they were doing that, but they said, okay. When you choose the number, even before you click the keyboard, you know, it's probably only going to be less than a second before you click on the keyboard, but it could be a couple seconds, maybe if you're slow. Um, we, when you decide to choose, say what number between one and 10, all of a sudden you think four, right? You just think four, right? This is where it gets weird. The computer could tell, it, it, and of course, the, our computers weren't detailed enough to tell you what number you picked, but it could tell that you picked a number that you picked the number for eight seconds before you made the decision. 
Hmm. Now you're probably you're probably you're probably thinking he's not saying that right. What I mean is, you, you think a number you, like you don't have to tell me, right? Pick a number between one and ten right now, right? Five. Oh, perfect. The computer picked you knew you chose that number eight seconds ago before I even asked you the question. It, it actually felt that way. I have to say. <laughs> Well, that's where it gets that. That's where it gets weird because and then, then it goes. And then that connects into deja vu, right? Well, it, yes. Which is, are you living? Because again, we're talking about efficiency, right? So, if if a computer simulation saves resources by not rendering things that you're not looking at, because you know to save resources, then why would it be real time at all? Meaning. Then we're talking about predestination, which science hates talking about, even though they were the ones that came up with the experiment. Seriously, neuroscience and free will. It's it, there's a wiki entry on it. It's fantastic. Do you which think, is, Mark, that um that what we see and experience is really just in our minds? For instance, well, what I'm even, trying to even more than that, meaning yeah. that that everything you're experiencing now you chose ahead of time, that you're not living in a real time simulation. You're living in a pre-record that you chose. So it's scripted to some degree, at least. It's scripted by you, potentially. It's but, where you. Know, I'll, I'll get. So let's get into some weird stuff. I'll give you a great example. Let's say you were. There was a movie that was kind of loosely based off of this. Uh, it was a Ben Affleck movie about reverse engineering stuff, where it was a memory block, which was okay. So let's say somebody gave you ultimate creative control over a movie. Right, Orson Welles had had this at one point when he made um, Citizen Kane back in the day. The only time it ever happened. So you get to choose the actors, the cinematographer, the the musical score, the script. You have total control over the movie. Everything you pick in the that happens in that movie, you chose. Right, and you finish the movie. You're the director. You finish the movie, and then you bump your head on a door before the premiere, and you have temporary amnesia. And your friends say, oh, it'll be fine. Just go to the movie anyway. You go to the movie. Well, for your friends sitting around you, it's just a movie. But for you, it's the greatest film that's ever been made because you absolutely 100% agree with every single choice that was made in that movie. Because you're like, oh my God, this is the movie. This the, the music I would have chosen. These are the actors I would have picked. Oh my God, this is fantastic. All it took was a bump on the head. All it took was your memory to be stunted just for a little bit. Right. Yeah. Imagine doing that, but for something bigger, like, I don't know, 70, 80 years worth of lifespan where you pick the major events, you pick the big, the big plot lines, you know, it's like, all right, you know, you have childhood events and then you get married, maybe you have kids, maybe you don't, you know, there's a tragedy and whatever the hero's journey all the way. And you pick all the, the, the major bullet points and then the software or whatever fills in all the fiddly bits. Right. So you don't have to pick the fact that you brush your teeth every day for X number of thousands of days. Right. That's redundant. That just you just gets filled in. Same thing with all the other stuff, but everything, everything else. So why would you do that? Here's why. To save not only save you, it reduces resources by 95 percent at least. And I'll, I'll give you a quick example. Do you ever run into kids? And you've seen these videos. They're they're out there. And there's channels that are huge that do this. There are kids that don't even play their own video games anymore. They just watch other people's YouTube videos of them playing video games. Yes. And they get basically the same experience because you know, you're watching it. And it's like, wow, you know, there's all these great things that are happening, right? But all you're watching is a little MP4 video, tiny. By comparison, there's no real time thing happening at all. There's no network. There's nothing happening. You're just watching a tiny little video film, but you're getting almost the same effect. Imagine if you could do that, but with an entire lifespan. It's just, you know. And, and, so, know and, so, and so at that point, Mark, what you, I mean, I, I know you're a deep thinker and you must think about this. So, what is this all about? Like, what is the purpose of this life? Oh, oh. Experience? Um, what do you think? Uh, it's novelty. Um, I, 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 a mere, mere entertainment? No, 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 not entertainment. It's necessity. Novelty, novelty by necessity. Meaning, uh, um, I just came up with that term, by the way. I'm just throwing this stuff out there. Um, yeah. which is, 
imagine if you've heard any of my interviews, I, there's a couple of genie references I've thrown out there, which is the, the universe seems to revolve on at a higher level on novelty and even at a small level, micro and macro. So when we're walking around, what's happening when you wouldn't run to somebody, what do you always say? It's like, Hey, what's new? What's up? We're always looking for what's new, yeah. right? Because we, we hate being stale. You know, some people can thrive in staleness. Sure. But other people, it's like, there's not anything left for me to watch on Netflix. I've run out of stuff, you know, and that's just Netflix, right? Not to mention the rest of the stuff. So let's say, um, I'll give you the, the bigger version. Let's say uh, you, you you find a lamp, right? And you rub it and the genie pops out and he goes, you know what? I'm going to give you three wishes, but you're clever, right? You know what to do. So one of those wishes you wish for? More wishes. Damn right. You wish for more <laughs> wishes. <laughs> In fact, you, some people would be like a million wishes. Nobody ever makes it to a million wishes, but we'll get to that. And then it's like, it's like, he's like, all right, go to town. And you wish for everything you could ever want. Don't, of course, I highly recommend if anyone does find a magic lamp, don't wish for money off right off the bat. You know, just in case you get a heart attack, you know, wish for immortality, you know, perfect health, all that other, all that other stuff. Make, you know, make sure you don't die and then go for the, the bigger stuff. Money should not be even in your top 10. So you start wishing for all this stuff. You, you become everything you ever want. You became a rock star and a race car driver and a, you know, a rancher and whatever. Or you, or you sit on a beach and you drink pino coladas for a uh, hundred years whatever it is, you start going through this stuff. And there was a Twilight Zone episode that was based on this where a gangster was given everything he wanted, but he was very limited in what he could think. Right. So you're burning through the wishes. You're burning through them. Burning through, and, you know, time has no meaning in this, right? It's kind of like the casinos. The reason why they pull windows and clocks out of casinos is so you don't, you don't keep track of time. And you're going through this maybe 100 years, maybe 500 years, maybe a couple thousand years, right? You, you start doing it. You dated everyone you ever wanted to date. Yeah, you, you you play inside video games. You you do everything. You, you explore every fantasy aspect you could possibly explore, and then all of a sudden, you realize you're running out of ideas. And you go back to the genie. Genie just sitting there looking at his watch, going hoo, doo, 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 doo. so he you say, "Hey man, can can you help me out? I'm 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 I'm, I'm tapped out here, right? I'm a pretty creative guy. I'm pretty I'm I'm tapped out." And he goes, "Well, I do have something." you 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 might be you might be up for you're gonna hate it to be honest so it's got to be voluntary yeah i'm not gonna force you into this and it's like all right well, i'll try anything what is it he goes well i'm gonna send you to a place and it's really 99.9 percent .9 suffering not the horrible horrible it's not gonna be like a torture chamber but it's gonna be pretty miserable almost tons of conflict i mean it's just pretty much non-stop and you're going to be there for now, 70, 80 years. But here's the good news. The good news is, is that when you get back, you know, you will, you will appreciate this like it's brand new and you will be so much happier. And, and again, you know, it's the, it's the dualism thing, which we might. And get exactly. And Mark, that brings me to, and I keep bringing this up, the 1997 yeah. movie uh, with Michael Douglas, the game. Cause he has yes. so much crap. There and you go. And. He just like I mean I still don't think it was worth do, it. Do you I, remember? Do you remember who his brother was? Well, no, that was tricky and it really almost went off the rails. Remember who his brother was in that? Yeah, Sean Penn. Sean Penn. And uh, yeah, the game with Michael Douglas, very interesting. Which was yeah, you, you know, put some spice back in your life, right? So anyway, at the end, the genie goes gives you this option, and you say, "Wow, that seems like a really great deal." What's the catch, right? And he goes, "Are you going to do it?" He goes, "Yeah, I'll do it." What's the catch? He goes, "The catch is you're never going to remember this conversation." And he snaps <laughs> his fingers, Thanos style, right? And all of a sudden, you get thrown into oh. here, which is this place is. I mean, think about it. Uh, you know, I never got married or had kids, so I have a lot of time to think about stuff. And this place is 99.9% .9 conflict. Okay. Hey, oh, I, phone call. Call. I think this is uh, our friend Sanity Machine. Okay. Hey, Sanity, I think you've got a question for Mark, and, and I'm looking forward to hearing his response. So go for it. Oh, hey, man. Thanks for having me on. Thanks again. for calling in, brother. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Thanks for the invite. Um, Mark, I was just going to ask you, uh, have you looked into the reincarnation soul trap topic or theory of uh, people being reincarnated and mind wiped each time so you basically you don't remember your past life or lifetimes? You, it could be 
you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have. And I like the happier version of it. I mean, there's a lot of variances. My, my favorite movie version of that uh, would be Dark City, by the way, which was which came out just before The Matrix. And coincidentally, because it was shot also in New Zealand, I mistake, The Matrix, which was low budget, used some of their sets. And the whole concept behind Dark City was is that there were these puppet masters that every so often would Tuning. alter the what? Tuning. Remember? Tuning. Yeah, absolutely Tuning. right. Tuning. They would alter the memories chemically of the of the people in the world. So they would memory wipe them and they would wake up with completely new oh, identities. Mark, remember they also change reality too. Buildings yes, they did. They could up. they yeah. would, you know, they would move things around physically. Yeah, it's a great movie. I mean, oh. I some some of those lines were were fantastic. What, what controlled the reality at the end of the movie, Mark? Uh the remember the they turned the machine on. They turned the machine. Remember the, the guy turned the machine on? Yeah, yeah. He turned yeah. I mean, it really so what just, did what did the machine look like? Oh, a giant clock. No. Remember it's it fanned out in the center of it. It looked like Saturn. Oh. Mm -hmm. cool. cool. Cool, cool, cool. Anyway, but but yes, I, the reincarnation thing, I, I do believe it, but I believe in in sort of a voluntary version of it. You know, where it, 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 we make fun of people that, you know, the 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 classic insane people. It's like, "Oh, I was Napoleon in a prior life." It's like, "Well, yeah, you know what? He could have been." Because if if you are talking about multiple realities, you know, multiple versions, then there's lots of people that could have been Napoleon. I don't know why you'd want to be Napoleon personally, but who knows? It, it's it's tough to say. But yes, I do. I believe in reincarnation. Yeah, but uh, but not the not the sinister version of it. How's that? Okay. Um, why is that though? Like. Uh beyond the silliness of the Napoleon type stuff or, you know, it, it's a possibility, but I mean, I think a lot of that stuff was put out there intentionally by the matrix of the system. Sure. To, it, to kind of poison the well where, Hey, this is stupid. Don't look into this sort of like flat earth. They do that with flat earth too. Like the flat earth society comes up on Google. They do. They, so it's they, like, you look into that. People just laugh it off and they're like, I'm not looking into flat earth. It's stupid. Look at this guy says the, you know, gravity is just the earth moving up at a certain speed and it's like it's done on purpose to sabotage it oh yeah well, but yeah, but it, you're it, absolutely it right yeah. but it doesn't it okay. doesn't really matter that much because we have uh, something that was introduced to me a few years ago called the uh, and i have to look it up either it's the seventh man effect or the eighth man effect which is you hit people by attrition meaning if People can say that, uh, uh, you know, people, if people bring it, it doesn't matter what topic it is. Apparently if like seven, I think it's seven different people. It could be eight, but if seven different people bring up, a, just like a movie to you, just, just casual on, on their own, not even really solicited. If you hear like seven different people talking about the same movie, eventually whatever hardwired into our brains, you'd be like, oh, maybe I should just watch that damn movie. All these other people are watching it. It's kind of a peer pressure thing. So with flat earth, we have spread so far so fast and again the only thing that slowed us down was the pandemic that even though yeah there's some stuff out there to try to poison the well like the whole you know the disc flying upwards through space argument which is mm -hmm. silly and thank god most of our our people don't don't go into it uh even that in christ the what what about oh, Steve, Steve well, he, he's dead by the way i don't have but to no, worry about him anymore even christ is dead oh yeah yeah he died years no. ago no yeah, yeah really i did not yeah. know that died in wow. a mental institution whoa yeah wow. i had no idea man wow yeah 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 from from the uh from the um concave earth group the concave earth yeah oh yeah and yeah, he I was think. but even even that i i mean i know some people get mad at me when i say that that um all press is good press and that's not absolutely true i mean it it's the the said the original saying is that even bad press is free which is look when you when you get ex the producers have told me they go it doesn't matter whether you love or you hate a topic as long as you're talking about it if you're talking about it you're generating interest i mean i have run into how many people i've run into that they got into flat earth because they ran into somebody that was railing against it you know uh, the you know the, the story I've, I've told several times um uh i put it in the book where i said that i go amy adams 
hates hates flat earth because her father's into it but she helped recruit people for us because she hates it so much you know where where she yeah. would she would go around to different hollywood things and be like oh blah blah blah, blah. you know she'd get all angry and people would be like what is amy so angry about i'm gonna look this up and they did and so I, I don't mind i mean i mean even like who's the guy that came out just a couple days ago uh eddie griffin came out as a as one of ours recently and you can tell he knows all the bullet points and uh i mean there's be some people who'd be with him a lot of people against him but he's talking about it so awesome good for him hey mark yeah fast forward to 10 years from now or maybe like what you might consider the end of your career and all the time you've spent yeah. with you know waking people up to what this reality possibly is right. the physicality of it the earth being flat what's what is your like number one best case scenario of what all this hard work you've been doing all the people in the flat earth communities been doing all the testing all these things showing the shape of this realm what's yeah. the best case scenario for you my best case scenario is that eventually we reach a threshold very similar i'm going to circle back to something i haven't talked about in years which is the hundredth monkey effect do you guys know what the hundredth monkey effect is for those that don't there Okay, so the hundred monkey uh, month get monkey effect, which science denies, even though I love when science denies something that they they're the ones that find it, right? It's like they discover something. It's like, and then they try to be like, oh, don't look over here, you know, like um like uh, Lord William Kelvin, you know, the guy that the absolute temperatures Kelvin guy, you know, his his name is used in universities every single day, right? And Kelvin's known for something else. Kelvin is known for he's one of the the guys that said that airplanes will never work. Even though they were designing airplanes during the later part of his career, he was like, no, nope, airplanes are never going to happen. It's never going to be a thing. And it's like, yeah, you're like the father of thermodynamics. <laughs> you wouldn't, mm. you couldn't see that coming. Anyway, so the 100th monkey effect. So some researchers, uh, these islands, a lot of islands next to Japan, and uh, there are these monkeys there. And they would throw these potatoes down for these monkeys. I don't know what they were doing, but the 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 some of the monkeys were um, figuring out that if they wash the potato on the beach, they it and they if they wash the sand off the potatoes, they were much more pleasant to eat. Right, but this is where it gets weird. When the around the hundredth monkey, yeah, this goes into a matrix type of software update. When about the hundredth monkey figured this out. Yeah, you know, that figured out that washing potatoes before he ate it was probably a good idea, so he didn't have to eat sand. They all figured it out. It went from 100 monkeys to every monkey. And here's where it gets even stranger. Even monkeys that were on the other islands that were not connected to these islands. So they would go to the island, other islands like eight, nine miles away, and you knew the monkeys didn't swim over there. And those and you, they threw the, the potatoes down the beach, the monkeys immediately washed them. Which meant, you know, if you believe in this sort of thing, that I, they probably didn't understand it then, but I get it, which is, oh, no, it's a beneficial update, which is, oh, yeah, you know, let all the monkeys what, it, it, they seem to be a happier group. Oh, I think, I, sorry, I think Stephen's call dropped. Did you have something else for us, Stephen? Oh, yeah, I got disconnected. Somehow. Yeah, what, did you sure. have another call? Oh, is that what it was? Well, wait, I can't remember what I, what uh, the original point oh, was. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark. It was it was like, what's what's your base case? Oh, yeah, yeah, the base is, okay, sorry. It's uh, the 100th monkey effect. So it's tied to the 100th monkey effect, which is I believe that if enough people consciously are on board with the whole enclosed world idea that we're living in, that this is not a base reality, by any stretch that at the at the bare minimum we're living in a snow globe right yes. on somebody's desk that the admin I, I talk about older civilizations that one of the admin civilizations or the caretaker civilizations just step in and that's the that's the big reveal it's the big act three which is for better or for worse they step in it's like all right that's it all right i'm coining the term right now butterfly what? consciousness the what butterfly consciousness butterfly consciousness <laughs> it's very peaceful it's like the butterfly effect yeah yeah no i'm a big yeah, fan yeah, yeah. by the way if, you, if you've never if anyone's never seen the ashton kutcher butterfly effect movie find the director's cut it completely changes your your outlook on it oh really it, oh yeah it is not a happy ending oh it no? is it is oh. uh it is uh it is a dark 
it is a dark ending, but at the same time, it's but it's and it's longer and it's more detailed. You could tell they the power of editing the the version they made was much more family friendly. And uh, mm. I, no, I love the butterfly effect. I think it's I think the again, which is why when people have asked me, it's like, hey, if you had to go back in time and change anything, would you? And now that I'm older, I realize how fragile our timelines are. You know, that if you change one little thing, it is. And it's not because of the butterfly effect that, that I watched. It's when I was like analyzing my own life. I was like, oh, man, I couldn't change this because if I did this, this wouldn't happen. And this would. And, and I know you're like saying, wasn't well, that kind of the life. plot of It's a Wonderful yeah. Life? It's like, yeah, it is the plot of It's a Wonderful Life. Which you, ever, was that, do you remember those moments in your life, Mark, where like there was a fork in the road and you were for you had. A oh, major, yeah. You, and you and I, I always think of it like I instinctually knew that this was a major decision I'm making right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, like my life is going to change one way or the other yep. based on how I decide. Yep. So, yep. Yep. And so I couldn't, I, my point now is that I really couldn't go back and change anything. If I wanted to be doing what I'm doing right this second, I couldn't change anything. Not a damn thing. Right. Uh, in fact, I, I don't even know. I, no, I wouldn't. I couldn't. So, so where, where did your script go from oh, here? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the what? Where does your script go from here, dude? Do you, do you oh, have yeah. Script? My personal script? Yeah. I, oh, just, dude, dude, after the Great Reset was put on hold and the Guidestones were destroyed. Right. I, I, I don't know. I mean, right. we're, I mean, I've done, I mean, there was a show I did, what, two weeks ago called I Got Nothing because I was absolutely, I had popcorn ready to go and it's like, all right. We're, you know, we got the Russia on the one side. Wait, we got pop, the China. popcorn or truth smacks. Both, both actually. Okay. okay. Uh, but on both sides, uh, I was waiting for you know the the Great Reset to go into its because it was this was their big move. The David Weiss and I talked about this for months. You know, where <laughs> I remember the phone call before, uh, way before the Ukraine thing happened, um, when we were just getting into the pandemic, and he goes, he goes, you know. I think they're crazy enough. They're actually going to do it this time. I think they're actually going to move forward with the plan. And I go, you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you because it certainly seems like that. And and I mean, I don't want to go too much down this 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 you know this part of this whole thing because yeah. you know I have to like just go to Rockfin and and end the YouTube stream because of the way right. things work here nowadays. That's fine. But but I just you know there is a new documentary out there that I mean just yesterday I had three people through different media. Sending me this freaking documentary that's on Rumble right now. What is it? Oh, it's uh, what's it called? I mean, I don't. You, you've stumped me here. It's called. Uh, 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 give me a second here. It's the Stu Peters uh, World. Oh, Fear of Diet. are you talking about the one with the vaccine? One? Yeah, Diet Stu Peters. Oh my god, I saw. Oh, that. I have not watched that yet. Send me oh the my link. god, send me the link. That to is, it. dude. What is going on? Yeah, I mean, like, there's the listen. Bad. They're pulling things out of people, man. It's just I know, it's, I know. It's unreal. Like, but in my my only my only comment there, it, yeah. but but please send me the link because I do want to watch it. Yeah. But where it was where it's on Rumble? It's on Rumble. But here's my th let me just and I want to hear what. Oh, you go said, ahead. Mark, but I, my 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 intuition was don't watch it. Go watch somebody else's review of it, because I just have this feeling that when we put our energy toward these things, it makes it more real. Because I do believe we, we're living in some kind of feedback system. So if we're if we're going, because those kinds of things, yeah, whether it's true or not, there's evidence. Because I think we live in some kind of matrix reality where there's like a feedback loop. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, if we're going to put our energy toward that, we're going to help manifest this as what it is and what it's really going to do to people. So I'd rather see a review like uh, like uh, Lift the Veil on Rockfin did a review of it. That's all I needed to see. That's all I needed to hear. Uh, well, I'm still I'm still gonna listen to it in the background. So if somebody send it right. to me. Um, but but it, what I was getting at is like, look, whatever's happening, the great reset that everyone's been so afraid about, and the FEMA camps and all this stuff is like, look, you can you can if you think that a great reset's gonna happen with a whole bunch of side effects and inflation, and you know what side effects I'm talking about, the, you got another thing coming. It's not enough. That's the point. That was that was just the precursor to the event that never happened. So now they got to come up with another event. It's like I. That's what I'm trying to. I'm trying to manifest spaceships. Period. <laughs> that's what the popcorn and truth <laughs> smacks are for. Yeah, give me give me spaceships. That I want. I don't care if it's Project Bluebeam. I I don't care. Give me the freaking ships. 
everybody knows what the ships are supposed to look like now, more or less. Everyone's got their own image in their head, but that's that's what I'm that's what I'm right. settling for. I just wanted to ask Mark about um, he was talking about the hundred monkey effect when I got disconnected. Yeah, earlier. yeah, yeah. Have you heard of uh, Rupert Sheldrake with his his concept of morphic resonance? Not the name, but possibly the concept. Why? He's he's a scientist. He's someone you should probably look into because he really goes in deep with that whole, not just the hundred monkey, but a, a whole bunch of stuff that's tied in with that. Okay. It comes to if it, if anyone wants to send me stuff, you know my my email address is on the in the body. All my contact information is the body of every description box of every video I ever put out on YouTube. So I'm easy to track down. Oh, I love yeah, getting I'll stuff from people. Tell you about that, but hey, guys, on that note, and something too while he's on here. Um, I haven't watched um, Dark City, but I heard that that's about a lot of it's about the Mandela effect with changing reality. And and I remember when I first started looking into the Mandela effect, people were mentioning that movie, and I don't know why I didn't watch it, but I, I really don't watch that many movies, and I don't even on a TV anymore like I haven't for a few years I've tried to stay you know clear of watching yeah, it, yeah. there was only a hand the the Dark City Mandela effect reference is that only a handful of people I mean very very less than one percent of the people in the in the in that whole world got it you know that realized there was something wrong the 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 changes did not take the cop the 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 one partner being the most obvious version of it but uh yeah Scared, I, I think, think you were you were oh i was just gonna say on the note you brought up uh you know uh, some people in the past and i thought of this one guy yeah, he was kind of interesting and he kind of came around i seen him around the flat earth time uh and that was hutchinson anybody know whatever happened to that dude the hutchinson effect guy i do not oh, you remember I, I him know who you're talking about. you remember him he was like this whack crazy yes, guy right? the canadian the Canadian dude, yeah, and I was wondering, like, yeah, supposedly he, he went to work for the military the or of, uh, British yeah. Columbia is where he did his experiments. Where he had, his yeah, class. he was like a like a, a kind of a Tesla type character. Yeah. yeah, yeah, interesting. Okay, I was just wondering if Mark had heard about it. No, no, no. But again, yeah. what, if anyone wants to send me stuff, I'm always looking for new things. Mark, um, if that's you that's had a like this, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You, you had something. Oh no, no, go ahead. I was just going to say right. it's a good, it's, that's a good one to bring up. Give us a little something for the imagination here. When you think about the physicality of the realm, the dome, just what this place is, yeah. Do your best to describe the visual of what it is, like what it looks like. Are there other lands beyond a certain place? What do you think that's all about? Whew, that's a tough one. Um, I believe we are in a giant. I want to say snow globe is the easiest thing to say just because people get it. But the, the arc of the, the dome doesn't have to be that high. It could be just a shallow sports stadium. I mean, considering how wide we are and the fact that commercial airlines, most people haven't even been higher than 10 miles up. And even if it was only a thousand miles up, that's nothing. I mean, you know, the snow globe miles would be tens of thousands of miles high, which you don't, you don't even need It'd be wasteful. Um, but as far as are there other civilizations, I'll, I'll leave. I'll answer the question with the question is, I know there's older. I know there's things flying around in the sky that aren't us. You can look. You can buy night vision binoculars and watch them any day you want. Uh, I did for years before I was into flat Earth, and it's just fantastic. And you realize it's like, wait, where are all these guys doing during the day? You know, what, what's their day jobs? And I, I believe that there that when, every civilization that is here, because this is not a one-off, we're not the first people to rent this apartment, they have to go somewhere. Maybe, it, maybe it's subterranean. The question is, do they have access to go outside of this place? And if they do go outside the place, like that map you have up there, do they get to go on lands outside, or are some of them trapped in here with us? Tough call, because I could go either way. Uh, but do I think there's... do? But to answer the, the short version, there are other civilizations here with us there are remnants of previous versions and of course why wouldn't there be there's there's remnants of uh, of older civilizations the, the the ground remnants all over the place so uh, do you know are there other continents outside of here sure i love that that thousand year old map that yeah, was found you know that, that right I not love that, that not though. that one but similar no, to no, it another one right i don't know if you're going to find it in that list uh but, but 
do I think that the civilizations that the bigger question for me is the civilizations that are in here with us, can they travel beyond or do they have the same rules as us where we were, we're stuck here? I don't know. I think they're, they're stuck in here with us, but that's just, that's just speculation. So, but do I think there's, a, but outside of here, could there be other domes? Could we be in a dome inside a dome inside a dome? Sure. Why, why, why wouldn't we be? Uh, it'd be more interesting. There it is. Yeah. Thousand year old map. Yeah. I love that one because that shows uh, the inner barrier, the outer bear, the, the outer marker, which would be thousands of miles thick. And then uh, the continents, what I liked about it is the continents outside of that are pretty much the same, uh, same size as the continents inside, which would be which would be about right. It's like why wouldn't the continents inside are about the right size? So yeah, why wouldn't you? And means right. there's tons of civilizations out there. And could there be another you know don't markers outside of them? Hard to say. But I, I love that map. Yeah, I mean it's it's from a, a newspaper clipping from what year? Uh, I think a hundred years ago. Yeah, uh, Mark, you need to watch the endless dome within a dome type of concept you talk about oh, and the endless. endless two brothers who uh, were part of a cult they go back to that cult and they find out that they're oh like, i have seen it i have seen it's kind of low, it's kind of low budget it is yeah but, but it's it's one of the best low budget movies oh, i have man, ever seen great yeah it yeah. is cool i mean i in fact i'm cool. sad that that no one has remade that with a with a with a solid budget because you could turn that with some right special effects i mean the special effects they had were fine but yeah, that I mean, was kind of crazy, man. There was some yeah. stuff in there that good, made me go. Good okay. catch. The yeah, endless. And yeah, yeah. The endless. Yeah. Yeah. No, very good. I just wonder, anyway, like, I just wonder, like you know what celebrities on the outskirts there on the other lands. You know who's Bell? Is Prince over there? No, know? no, no. I don't. I don't think anyone. You know what I what I try to tell people is that people. You know the Ash experiment, peer pressure, and people are kind of like fish and birds which is once the first people start going, a whole bunch of people would start going. And all the next thing you know, the, the big the big giveaway there would be a yacht or a cruise boat would just sink with a whole bunch of celebs on it simultaneously because the, you couldn't get people to say, okay, you're going to go this year and you got to wait two years and whatever. No, 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 no. And plus, again, celebrities, media celebrities are not the puppet masters. Media celebrities are just the puppets. The, the, the thing I have said for a long time, which is the, the curse of the first rule of power has never, ever changed, which is stay hidden. If you are the puppet master, the curse of being the puppet master is no one can know who you are. Not really, you know, because the, the or was what Napoleon said, his, his line was great, which is never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown because you will. You know, they can't get you if they don't know who you are. You know, if they, if you, if you're the puppet master, but you're anonymous, who, who's, uh, there's no target on your back. So everybody else, they're just garden variety celebrities that can be controlled and need to be controlled for various reasons, which is also, by the way, not to end on a, on a weird note, why I haven't seen any A-listers go down because of <clears throat> side effects. Hmm. Not a single A-lister, hmm. not one. Hmm. B and C-listers all day long. A-listers, no. Why? Because you know you don't want them they're too high profile which is why and every once in a while someone will slip through the cracks and get ill like celine dion it's like uh, you know she's not going to be touring anymore oh uh, what does mark think about the finding uh uh of a, well, it was justin uh, bieber too so oh yeah justin bieber yeah he's twitching sure yeah, he's twitching yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. it's almost identical to celine but but he's not dead and either That's Celine, true. none of them i mean you're not denzel washington he's not going down oprah's not going down Tommy yeah. here in the chat was asking, what does Mark think about them finding NASA yeah. Challenger wreckage on the bottom of the Bermuda Triangle? Eh, I mean, it's fine, but that's not the, the big issue. Uh, the big issue is why why did we find, remember, there's a video on my channel where one of our guys went out to one of, you know, those guys that's still alive, went to his house while he's shoveling snow in his driveway and talked to him. Right. And my, the thing which I love, one of the things people forget, which is, the, the giveaway, which is the thing about the guy when they were talking about him in his driveway, is if you're being accused of being the astronaut that died in the 86 Challenger disaster, right? The first thing anyone would, should, would and should do is you should throw out your alibi. It's like, no, 
1986, I was doing blah, blah, blah. He never said that. He never said anything about what he was doing in 1986. In fact, all he said was, yeah, people have said I look like him my entire life. It's like, <laughs> what? Because <laughs> this guy had a really unique look to him. And it's like, that's really, that's so odd that, that you would be. But, hey, I, you know, I'm going to give NASA some points there because they didn't know what the, um, what the Internet was going to turn into, you know, back in 1986. Right, was way, way ahead of you know, because you could put people in with this relocation, and they could be gone. Not anymore. You got to hide them very, very well, and probably in other countries. What do you think is the like, like the, let's say, if you can do the top three, the top three best evidences of the nature of this realm, and 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 do you, and do you personally, even though you don't go out there and say it that much, do you believe that part of that could be? The, the back end of it, the game theory, simulation theory, does, do you do you include that? Uh, no, I don't. I don't because I don't include the double slit experiment. I don't include memory, um, neuroscience, and free will uh, because people don't get it. They just don't. I mean, but it's like, about you personally, is this something like in your top, when you think about for you personally, and you're, you're not out there saying whatever you're saying, whatever you're sharing, but when you think about- Oh, me personally? Oh, yeah. For me personally, yeah. The double slit experiment, uh, neuroscience versus free will- but I'll throw in um, uh, one of the ones I use anyway, which is gravity versus the vacuum of space, which is by far, the, again, people don't tend not to get it because it's physics, but it's, it, and because people don't understand what a vacuum is, because a vacuum is transparent and so is what we're looking in right now. You know, it's 99.9. The human eye cannot d detect the difference between a vacuum chamber and a chamber filled with air, you know, with atmosphere. So, but that that one is by far my my, my favorite because but there's never been an answer for it. Which is, if there's a vacuum chamber above you and you pull the pop, you know the the cap on it, you pop the cap. What happens? The the air equalizes instantly. That's how it works, right? It, it implodes. So, yeah, it, it. I mean, it's really really fast. It is not like the movies, but I get it. In the movies, you have to do stuff for the plot to keep things interesting. Which is why I, I I can't even watch the end of Aliens ever again because you know Sigourney climbing up the ladder as as space is behind her, and it's like well, no, you're dead in like a fraction of a second. The girl's dead, the Marine's dead, the alien's dead, but you're all dead. The movie's over. Roll credits. And but, then and then, the, and then going back to the physicality aspect of what the realm is, what the world is. Top three that it's uh, more of a flat plane of existence. Oh, the top three. Um, not well. Uh, the long distance photography. Um, gravity again versus the vacuum of space, and uh, I'll throw in uh, the moon temperature for for the third one on that because it's so easy to do. Which is that the moon uh, is generating a cold light that we can do now. We can generate, you know, you can look on Amazon and look up cold laser light and health and beauty products, and you find it all day long. People don't understand that lasers can be cool. The question is, why is the moon generating a cold light? And the reason we can tell it's generating a cold light is because that is moon... so Mandela, man. I know right? my whole right. damn life I grew up and it was never I, I knew a lot about science, uh, you know, the stars, everything. I can't believe that until 2015, when that, you know, came about, yeah. I did the test myself. It was insane. Yeah. 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 The, the, the fact that the, the moon shadow is warmer Right. Then the, uh, the the moonlight just blows me away. And science has a really, really tough time with it because most of them never even heard of such a thing. Yes. And it's, it's just. Fair. I was told that one as a kid that I was told by my parents that moonlight is cooler. It's cooler in the moonlight. Mm. I remember hearing yeah. that. I didn't wow. know. It wasn't explained to me mm. why, but um, you know, even my dad talked about the possibility of the earth being flat. And I remember. You know, thinking about sea level and, you know, the water being level at the curved water didn't make sense to me. Huh? The vacuum didn't make sense with no solid barrier like our quote unquote atmosphere, higher upper atmosphere really I got what well, off the I'm, back of space. I have to ask Mark this question. I question like the, the movement of the earth, that kind of stuff didn't add up with airplanes. Like I, I was questioning flat earth, the globe model and looking, you know, thinking about possible the possibility of it being a flat earth when i was probably like seven eight years old wow wow but not really a, wasn't really a huge shock to me in 2015 or so when it started coming out because i was like well it's just more proof of what i always thought you know what i mean but cool. I, I i would like people to look into 
beyond just flat earth and beyond Mandela effect, I try to tie things together. All the models. Yeah, I think these are at, all you know pieces. These are all pieces of a pieces bigger puzzle. Together. Yeah, these are all bigger pieces. Yeah. This is pieces of a bigger puzzle. I do believe that and feel that. I want Mark to answer this one question because I saw this. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. But... Scarab, okay. Scarab's got a, a question. Go for it, man. All right. So, Mark, a few years ago, a huge hurricane hit Florida, right? And I saw something that just, I mean, just blew me away. We know that water comes to level. How in the hell did a hurricane come through Florida and through the coastline? At the coastline, there was literally like miles of water that was just removed from the beach. Like you could see like sunken boats and everything. Have you ever seen those images? Like where, and I'm thinking to myself, well, where did all the water go? You're telling me you took out all the water from the ocean somehow got sucked out? Like how in the hell did it, did you have, I understand tides, right? But this was way more than a tide. This was more than a high tide, low tide thing. This was like miles dude of just like of land that was exposed now. How do you, I do, I do not, I do not know. I, so, I have not, okay. All right. not given that one a lot of thought. Sorry. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hey, and right. um, since, you know, Scarab and I, Dan, or, you know, Mandela, Mandelta, like you say, I guess, <laughs> affect <laughs> people, reality shift people. What is your position on reality shifts? And what are like some of your top ones? If you do see it, what are the ones that kind of trip you out? Like Mandela effect? Yeah. Um, What's your position on it? Don't you dare say Berenstein Bears. Man. No, no, no. I wasn't going to say any of that stuff. No, um, it, okay. it, no, no. I, right. For me, I there's no one because there's so many different people that that. Um, I mean, if you gave people like their top twenty, and and had them compare their top twenty Mandela, wow, <laughs> Mandela effect things, right. uh, they probably couldn't agree on on a lot of them because some people that agree with some some agree with others. Um, for me, I try to explain it in um, in in software, which is kind of like what they did with the Matrix of the Black Cat. Which was when I was when I was running a tech support uh, team in Colorado years ago, I, I was notorious for using like the same Word document for my notes, and I was saving it over and over and over and over again and making changes over and over and over. Well, after about a year of doing that, this document was doing weird stuff. You know, I'd, I'd be open. You know, it didn't matter if I rebooted the machine or not. the 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 document again, document it wasn't a physical document; it was just numbers had been not corrupted, but there was something going on with it to where the formatting was changing on a regular basis. And there were things popping up and ghosting where there shouldn't have been. And I brought in software developers and I said, is, it, is there a way to explain this? And they gave me the same answer that, that's used even now in 2022, which is why do computers, why, why do you still have to reboot computers to fix stuff, right? You shouldn't have to, but that's just how it works. So when when do i think there's reality changes yeah yeah you you bet i do do i think there's changes that are that are happening on all the time why yeah why not why wouldn't there be changes that go in the question is when these changes are made are there residual particles left as breadcrumbs to make it more interesting or is it a limitation of the system that i don't know i mean because i could go either way i could see it being breadcrumbs you know, where people are like, yeah, let's mess with people a little bit because it does make it interesting. I mean, hey, I mean, the Mandela lot, effect. There's a lot of there's a lot of breadcrumbs in newspapers.com. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the, the other side is, you know, could it be a limitation of the system? I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've seen so as I've been analyzing the whole enclosed world thing for seven years, uh, I've I've realized that the designs are so clever that you know of the world itself that why wouldn't there be clever aspects in just about everything to where again people love a mystery and we're we, we're drawn to it and so why i why wouldn't it be there so and that's check this out i mean i don't i don't know if i got a solid you know answer from you on like the ones that do trip you up do you have ones that just like really um no there's no one that really blows my mind I, I'm I'm pretty open minded when it comes to stuff. So, do you as as we come to a close? Do you remember since you know this is a week of gratitude and Thanksgiving? Do you ever remember a timeline when Thanksgiving was the third week of November and not the fourth? Huge. Man. No, but that doesn't really. 
the third Thursday of the month, man. You it don't was remember the third that? Thursday. The third Thursday. Yeah. Growing up like that. It, that. Let me tell you something, Mark. You got to look at Life Matrix and stuff when it came. That was one of the best ones because he went back to Facebook and found people on the third Thursday making Thanksgiving dinner and wondering where their families were. Like, just <laughs> like, like when it happened. Like, And not just right. one lady, multiple people. Like, hey, turkey's ready. Where's everybody? You know? That's true. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah, no, I mean, I I don't I don't have any one one thing. I mean, I men, the Mandela effect for me was I you know, I I collected things from other people and and, and some I some I liked it, some I didn't. Um but I was more interested in st- the visual stuff like the um uh the black white dress which was, you know, that remember the famous dress picture from years ago. Yes. Where you could have people in the same room looking at the same image on the same computer and seven of them would say they saw well i can't remember what the original color was was you know saw a black dress and 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 three of them saw a white dress and all of them would pass a polygraph test because reality so is it's like uh, what do you do with that eye is the lens you know yeah. mark i remember uh, i was flying my drone i had a drone 125 feet right above me man okay yeah. and uh you've seen you've been i'm sure you've seen a meteor shower right sure okay so explain to me how i'm flying a drone looking up with a witness and we see a meteorite go underneath the drone but that's fire. Fire. now this is what's strange is my theory was well if we're looking up at the sky and we see a flash of light we just assume it's tens of thousands of feet up right how do we know it really is right right in fact let me mm-hmm. let me end with this because i do have to run um which is if it, I'll give you a great example, and, and you just inspired me on this one. Go to if it, it, for people that have not been, uh, or if you remember, go to Disneyland whenever you find the time, and go to one ride, which is Pirates of the Caribbean, and which is fascinating because they base the movies basically on a ride. There's no books, there's no TV series. The movies were based off a ride. But that last scene where you pull into the harbor, and there's ships off in the distance firing on the town. Oh yeah, and it's and it's done so well. And you look out there, and it's like you have no idea how far those boats are away. I mean, are they several miles away? Are they a hundred yards away? Are they fifty feet away? You don't know. Mm. And that's all they did. There was paint and wood and some lights, and they and they created that sort of perspective. Imagine what we can do with our Mm -hmm. tech, and then imagine what somebody could do with tech that's millennia you know ahead of ours you know the truth is this broadcast may not even happen this evening <laughs> it could be an illusion sure <laughs> sure you may you may be the only one here right now i know yeah, yeah. i may i may just be an npc interacting with you <laughs> mark really appreciate you spending time with us this evening it's been really yeah fun yeah day. happy to do it happy to yeah, do man. it great hanging out with you man thanks guys yes sir thanks mark thanks bye mark Bye. Hey, stay on. Stay, stay, stay on for a minute, Dan. Oh, am I staying or am I leaving? I'm leaving. You're out of here. I'm leaving. Bye, guys. <laughs> See, ya. See ya. Bye, Mark. Oh Bye. man, that was good. That was good. Was Thanks it for coming on, brother? Hey, no problem, man. I hope I uh, added enough color to it. No, you did, man. It was it was it was yeah. vibrant, like like the NBC Peacock, <laughs> <laughs> like like your logo, man. Yeah, pretty colorful, man. Like the logo, yeah. and yeah. Uh, and thank you everybody for joining us for this one, and and thank you, uh, Stephen, for calling in as well. And um, got anything else in the close, Dan or Stephen? No, brother. I, I you uh, know you caught me off guard over here. So go ahead, Stephen. You close this out, Stephen. It's up to you, buddy. Sorry, no pressure. <laughs> what was that? I was just gonna say uh, how you know how uh, Josh talks about other civilizations what about just interdimensional travel well that that's i mean that's absolutely i mean i i think it goes beyond the physicality of this realm i do believe there is interdimensional in interdimensional travel likely possible and um i you know and we're we're probably multi-dimensional beings going in and out of different realities perhaps all the time something like that yeah on that level i think it's frequencies man i think it's all frequency Frequency, you can tune it it's just like a radio like you listen to a radio you can be on one frequency and the next one is a totally different station with different people it's it's very similar to that yes reality to me yeah yeah all right boys thank you so much that's been a good one
And uh, right, yeah, buddy. and um, thanks, man. And have and have a great holiday, a gratitude day tomorrow. And um, by the way, I might be back on it on tom tomorrow to do a, a friendsgiving. Somebody mentioned that they want mm. to do a friendsgiving, so we'll see if that uh, lines All right. up. All right, man. Awesome. Happy Turkey Day. Gobble uh, gobble, baby. On Turkey Day. <laughs> for the vegans out there. <laughs> oh, there oh that's guys. right. All right, man. Have a good one, bro. Take care. Thanks, everyone. That was awesome. Thank you, Mark Sargent. Thank you, Dan Scarab. Links will be in the description. Appreciate you guys. Happy Gratitude Day. If it's the third or fourth week for you. Well, right now we're on the fourth week. <laughs> it was the third week. All my childhood, I remember it was the third week. Blessings, everybody. <laughs>